Now, as Miss Baxter comes tonight, one of the things that, praise God, yeah, I forgot to get the mic. Praise God, thank you. One of the things that Miss Baxter asked me to tell you about was that she wants uh, all our young people, that's 18 and down tonight, um, she's at books on, she wants all of them, if you don't have it, have a book on the revelation of hell. Amen. And she also has, I believe, a few on heaven yeah, left. And so she's going to give, if you're 18 and below, and you want one of those books, then you can get them at the end of the service tonight, um, as long as the supplies last. Amen. Isn't that good? She wants to sow that. She wants to sow that. Haven't we been blessed, church? Amen. Love you. Love you. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you. Good afternoon. You can be seated. Isn't it great? How many has been happy when you go home? Wow. <laughs> uh, we heard about a lot of miracles, Pastor. They came up and was telling me there. Raise your hand if you got blessed those miracles last night. Raise your Look at that. Look around you. Oh, my. Raise them high. You got to uh, call the church, you know, let them know. Pam, you guys get ready to answer the phones. Send emails. You really do need to log it down and write it. Who was a girl came up and said she's not dizzy anymore? I was teasing her. But stand up, baby. You got healed. Tell them. Tell them. Oh, my gosh. was tonight amen i want two more of people that that were were healed last night that want to testify okay come on up alan praise god amen i'm gonna use the mic so everybody can hear that can you hear that? okay amen here here we go okay what happened I, um, in September, I suddenly lost my vision and um, I've had some other neurologic symptoms. And last night, I will have to say, I'm not 100% at this time, though, I have received my healing. Yeah. Um, I have, for the first time in six months, um, I, I have not had numbness and tingling in my hands at all today. Yeah. Um, I usually list to the left, that's um, hence the cane. I have not fallen or leaned to the left at all today. Um, my joints and my fingers are better, and my vision is much better today. Praise so. God. <laughs> Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. How many know the ten lepers, as they went, they were healed? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, one another one. Who else? Really? Amen. Praise God. Brother Cliff? Okay. We'll take two. Sis, come on. Both of you come, and we'll take that. Amen. They'll be short. Right to the point. And powerful. This is good. Amen. I've had a knee problem for years and haven't been able to walk without limping. I haven't been able to run. Last night after I left from up here, she, she blessed my heart and prayed on my heart. But also when I was walking up the aisle, I felt a muscle come up in my leg. And this morning when I woke up, I feel this tightness around my knee like something's holding it together and it hasn't hurt today. Praise God. Thank you, sis. We rejoice. Amen, Brother Cliff. I came up with two problems last night, and I had a terrible heartache uh, over some things that have happened to me recently. And after she prayed for me, um, I traded in a, a heartache for a heart of compassion. So, Amen. That's good. That's really good. Then I had a, in my neck, I had a pinched nerve in my neck. Uh, Friday, uh, last Friday, I went to the doctor. He took four x-rays, and he said I had a severe pinched nerve. I probably have to go to a hospital. And, and have some work done on it, you know. So after last night, um, it, it completely left. 
uh, for the first time in about a week and a half, uh, I've got a real good night's sleep. Praise Woke God. Woke up this morning, healed completely. So, <laughs> Thank you, brother. Amen. Praise God. I, I first want to give honor to Almighty God tonight, and I want to give honor to Pastor Chris, his wife, and all the staff here that's been so good to me. And uh, Sister Debbie, we've got a beautiful suite and a joining room the church is paying for, and we're having a lot of fun. And uh, we've been giving the maids some books and CDs and stuff. Yeah, one of them, we wanted her to come to church tonight. I don't know if she did. But we really want to thank you from our heart. You've been treating us so wonderful, so wonderful. And uh, I, my pastor is Tony Brazelton. He's on the Internet and the YouTube, Victory Christian Center in Maryland. And he, we have a church of 5,000. He does. And he has a uh, four or five other churches. And he's got elders and boards. And they're under their leaders, Cleflo Dollar. And what I want to tell you is this, that my mentor, uh, Burl Rice, many years ago, we met him 25 years ago, preaching. I was going with my mentor to preach in Washington, D.C., not too far from here. And he came in with his wife, and they had one baby. I think the little girl, she was just on, holding her arms, and he had his Bible, and he, and he thought he was coming to Bible study. I remember this 25 years ago. And... Uh, my mentor went right over to him. She said, thus saith the Lord. Said, you are going to be an eagle and have eagles under your arms. And under this eagle spread, you will have many churches. You will have Lear jets, And you will do, go preach all over the world, you and your wife. Now, here they are, just a young married couple with a baby. He fell out in the floor with his Bible under his arm and slept the whole time she preached. And we were so uh, excited. We kept in touch with him and everything. And uh, tr truly, every word she says to him has come to pass. Every word, you know. And I, I look back as I traveled with her and learned from my mentor. From She was from A.A. Allen's time. And I'm telling you guys that th when you're with people like that, they're just down-to-earth people. They love you. They love what you feel, what you think. It, d it does a great in your heart. And uh, today, my pastor, <clears throat> he'll fly me in like once a year. And it's like he treats me like Pastor Chris does. I wanted to compliment you on how you treat me. That's just how he treats me. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we're in a church uh, where we have armed security sometimes, you know, in those areas. And what it is, God is blessing those churches that love Jesus Christ. And a prophet said not long ago, I think it was Clem Clement, he, and he's a real prophet, he said that there, God was going to seek in the countries little churches and big churches. He was going to find churches that loved him, loved people, and he was going to establish them, and they would bring living water to the people. That's what was spoken. <clears throat> Excuse me, that great revivals will break out in the earth from the countries. So you guys are in the country, right? And get ready for you're going to have a great move of God. Great move of God. And, and I want to speak to you tonight a little more on hell. Because I didn't get to share about a lot of the things. And we were talking today. And then the Holy Ghost had spoke to me to correct myself to you guys in the office today. And what I want to talk with you in a minute. My gifts are given to me by God in the book of Corinthians. The gifts of the Spirit. Amen. You guys all know about the gifts? Not really, huh? Well, they're given by the Holy Ghost. And the pastors, the elders, the leaders will lay hands on you. Or I had Jesus Christ lay his hands on me. Plus the elders, too, and mentors, and, and Schambach. Many people prayed for me. So what I'm going to tell you, what he gives me by revelation, I, I'm telling you, it blows my mind. And the other day, uh, I was sharing about you men having one less rib than a woman. But I stand corrected. I was in air because uh, I have doctor friends, not only, you know, that email pastor here, but I have other doctor friends I've never asked that to. So I want you to know you men have the same amount of ribs as we do. Cause, cause I just want to correct myself. I stand corrected. And not only that, we were talking, and I said, you know, that's true. I, that was like for years I heard that, you know, growing up and everything. 
And the Lord said to me, uh, I'm not imperfect. I gave Adam another rib and we were laughing. He talked to me right a while ago in the office and we were laughing how perfect is God. So tonight I want you to know he's perfect, but he's holy. Sweetheart, he's real. And if you do fall or make a mistake, be quick, okay, to get corrected. We are children in a world that is so mass and so full of sin, so full of meanness, so full of abuse, and God wants us to be different. He wants our light to shine amongst everywhere we go, right, children? And, and today, Debbie got a call from a nurse in a clinic in um, Arizona about her treatments. And we asked her about the lady that had the, the machine on her last night. We asked the nurse about her. Are you here today, honey? There, yeah, we saw you. Were, she's here. Well, tonight we got to make sure Pastor Don and uh, Debbie, Pastor Debbie, we lay hands on you again because the nurse told us how, how to pray for you. She said, you have a heart disease that's it's inherited, right? Yeah. And then Jesus broke all those curses in his name. Okay. So, but she said that uh, she was telling us all about you, just what you told us up here, but more. And she said, it's very serious, very, very serious. And the lady knows it. And that, uh, that, that machine is to keep her heart going. And that today uh, I really wanted us to pray for her again tonight for that disease to dry up. Because, you know, how many heart surgeries you had, honey? How many? Somebody speak up. Four, Four heart surgeries. So that's enough. It's over enough. Right? Right? <laughs> and God good. So we're going to pray for you again tonight. I mean, she was so sincere, that nurse, and so kind. And we ended up prophesying to her <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Debbie's going to take her some of my books. But what we want to know, God loves you. I don't want to leave here feeling that I didn't do everything God wanted me to do. Because I know my God is real. I know he's there. We don't want to see it sometimes when we're little stinkers. And we have been stinkers. You know that. Oh, for real, we have. I think that's why he said some of us are a stink in his nostrils, right? Right, guys? Because we got to admit it, we're full of the devil sometimes. But God is using people like me and Bill Weiss to clean us up. See, he cleaned me up again today. So you got to say, okay, God, show me my faults, show me my sins, and let me clean my mess up. Sometimes you got to go to people and repent to them. So tonight we're going to talk about holiness, talk about angels. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the depths of being holy. And we want to talk to you about, if you backslide, don't think you're gone to hell. How many know what I'm talking about? What does the word say? Now, I know that you're, Jesus is married to the backslider. So he wants to pull you back and bring you closer to him and correct you and love on you and just fix you up. Right, guys? And he shows he's, he's real by the healing miracles. He said, signs and wonders will follow them in my name. And God showed all of us the elders, a pastor, we were all laying hands on them. He wasn't just one person. So you never take the glory for what God has done. So right now, let's thank him what he's done, children. Wow. Feel the love. Oh, wow. Well, thank him in, in, in your own way for just a minute here, please. Lord Jesus, we just cannot comprehend what you've done in this beautiful church. I see, Father God, how you love this church. I see the humility, the humbleness of the servants of God here. I see the hunger in the congregation, God. Light their fires brighter. Lord God, drop more power of the Holy Ghost on us tonight. Let us be awake and aware of the, the realities of hell, that we don't want one person, not our worst enemy, to go to hell, Lord Jesus. Let us be so in tune to you, Lord God, that we'll listen to you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to talk a minute I'm gonna, uh, about hell to you. And we're going to go over to the book of Luke, chapter 16, real quick. 
And I want to, I want to uh, ground something in your spirit, grind something in your spirit. We've had a lot of fun, okay? And God is talking to me, you know, as a mother and a grandmother and a traveling evangelist, that, you know, as time goes on, from the cradle to the grave, God wants a people to praise him. God wants a people, darling, to love him. God wants a people that will not stand back if your neighbor's getting beat and you don't do a thing about it. You got to help that neighbor. And, and God wants a people to understand his holiness. And that's what we're going to talk about here for just about five minutes. We want to live in an atmosphere where if we're in danger or our family, that we can immediately call on God in the name of Jesus and he will send help from the sanctuary. And I will tell you a vision I've seen about that many times. Yeah, I'll tell you about it. Because uh, you've got to understand your position. But if you're full of Satan and beating and cursing and drinking and cussing, listening and doing wicked things, you call on God. Sometimes he does hear you. I've got to say that. He saves many, many people in those positions. But when you're really real with God, you have a blessed assurance in your soul He's going to intervene and help you. An intervention of the Holy Ghost power. I mean, it would take days to tell you how God has helped us. Kept airplanes from crashing. Uh, blowing up with, with us riding on those planes and cars. How we've even had our car in L.A. come up in the air and go over another car and almost hit us broadside. By the power of God lifted that car. And put it down on the other side of that car that was going to hit us broadside somehow. Crazy. We didn't know how Almighty God does things. And I got hit in the back of the car one time with my mentor. And we got out. I had a, I had a Cadillac. And we went back to the, the, the back. And the bumper, the guy hit me very hard in the back. And he went off the side of the road. And time he got out of the car running over, he said, Are you okay? I'm so sorry. And he said that your bumper has been in. And we got out of the car. Immediately, that bumper was straight. No, not even, it was crazy. That man looked so weird, and I did too. And, <laughs> dears, I'm telling you how good is God. He is good. And all the time, honey. And we have to know this. you got to know he's your friend. He, wa he wants you to know tonight he's coming again. And he don't want you to be caught in the darkness, honey. He wants you to be aware of the holies of holies, the love of God. No sin will enter heaven. Don't think you're going to repent when you get there. No, you cannot. You repent on this earth. And you tell God, I'm sorry, God. Forgive me. And if you've got to cry, men, you cry. Because your tear balls are, tears are in bottles. Every tear you've ever cried is caught by angels in a bottle. And taken to heaven and put in tear books with your name on them with a manly book you get big red stones green stones and manly material women get diamonds pearls and lace and their names up there and ever tear any of you've ever cried angels are right there with you catching those tears and when i cried unto the lord that psalms 56 verse 7 8 and 9 when i cried unto the lord then my enemies turned back this I know my God is for me. In my God I will put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man will do unto me. And I want to encourage all you people that got your miracle last night. You stand on God's word. You do not go off your medicine till the doctor tells you to. And he will claim you're healed. You watch and you see. And you keep standing on God's word. If you've got to open your Bible and smack the devil in the head with it, you do it. Because... Today, when I was, uh, me and Debbie were preparing some stuff, the power of God came on me. He said, you know, it's getting towards close to Easter. And see, he has times and seasons, and we know it, what Easter is. It's a day we worship Jesus for what he paid for you and I. And he, it, was, it was like a revelation, and we were talking about something. And all at once, it's like my whole personality changed. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, never, never take the cross lightly. He said, never, never let, you know, you take my sacrifice to the earth lightly, my son, Jesus Christ. And he gave me phenomenal things. I can't even remember them now. But he said to me, when my son died on that cross, 
I turned my head and I cried and I cried and I cried. He said, the storms and the winds was my tears from heaven when my son died. And he said, I myself went to that tomb and put him back together again. So that you could have life eternal. So that you, when you die, can, if you're saved and born again, can come with me forever and ever. And go to other galaxies and go to every place in heaven. Where you can go through the waterfalls and diamonds come down. You can walk amongst the flowers and they sing music to you. They make, they're big as this table, one rose. And they sing music to you. You just don't know what God has you. Streets of gold. He has remarkable, remarkable things. He has bubbles, big bubbles that children ride on. And they get up in the air and then they'll, another bubble will come and catch them. And they'll ride in the air on bubbles. You think, and now they've got a thing on TV where they've invented them. Bubbles. And years ago, God told me to tell them about the flowers that sing and I think it was uh, one of the big stores, Walmart, so I made those pots. You push a button and the flowers sing. Yeah, isn't that great? And everywhere you look in heaven where the kids grow up is goldfish that are in ponds of water and they're playing in the water, little two and three-year-old children. And that goldfish opens his mouth and block letters come out and, and they get the block letters, squeeze it, and it says, Jesus loves you, sings to those children. And every baby that's ever been conceived on this earth that's been aborted or murdered or died, the angels have come and got their little soul at the time of that death and taken that baby to heaven, and God finishes that baby. And it, the angels take it to grow up in certain parts of heaven. There's also a room where little shelves come out, made like a seashell. Then there's bur uh, trees suspended in the air. Little birds sit on there and sing to that baby. And they call them precious. But when you name that unborn child that you cared, you knew you had it. You name it, the angels take that to heaven. You say, God, please forgive me, or whatever you did. And Lord, if you went abortion. And you merely mean it. You mean it with your whole heart. And say, God, please tell me, was it a boy or a girl? And when God does that, then you say, Lord, may I name my baby. This is real. And you take, the angels take that name put it on the top of the little board over the baby and remove the word precious. They like Mark, like John, uh, you know, Tom or Judy, they put that name ahead of the top of that baby. And sometimes the babies say little, you can walk up to a six year old child and they're, they're so brilliant. It blows your mind what comes out of their mouth. Uh, they can play the piano. One boy was playing a piano better than Beethoven and singing with the voice of an archangel. It's brilliant what God has for us in heaven. Teenagers in heaven, families in heaven, young people. You, God, I don't understand all those mysteries. I don't know it. But I knew, do know when you die and go to heaven, if you were 100, 15 minutes in the atmosphere, you look 28 or 33 years old. You know that. You don't... <laughs> How would you like to be there up there someday? Am I, are you listening? We all want to be there someday. So children, I want to explain to you about heaven. And now I'm going to touch on hell. Because here in Luke, it tells you clearly that when you die without Jesus Christ, God's judgment comes on you. Almighty God, his judgment of eternal damnation. And you say, what is eternal damnation? Sweetheart, that's where when you, okay, say so you die, and like you saw in the video, they go down, they fall down, and their demons take them, and they begin to put them in certain sections of hell, like you have these boxes up here. They have pits, and, and like maybe a thousand acres or more of land down there where the pits are, just the holes. And they take and place you in a pit that's got burning rocks in it. It's in a circle. And then it has flames that come up from the bottom. And they'll place you. You have a skeleton form. 
you can still talk like here. I'm going to read you in a minute. You can still hear. You can still think. You have your senses that you died with. If you die blind, you're blind in hell. And anyway, they take your soul. It's in a skeleton form. That's how God showed them to me. And they put you in the middle of a pit with your name on it. And then the fires around there come up over your bones. And you have a great ugly substance on your body. And as that substance comes up, the fire touches it. And it burns it like hot lava. And then it melts down. And as it melts down, they're pulling big white worms out of their arms, screaming, let me die, let me die. And death never comes. And then you're watching this by, say, see, where you're sitting in your seats. Can you imagine if anybody, you know, went to hell, there were thousands of people in, a, in this area that had the, either it was different types of sin. Over here, say, in hell, they would be the adulteresses. Over here would be the liars. Okay? You understand? They're sectioned off of the lifetime of sin they committed before they died. If you did every sin, I don't know how they do that. But the, I don't. But I'm going to tell you what I do know. That these skeletons can turn. They can talk. They can scream. You don't know if it's a man or woman, honey, till they speak. And by their dialect, you know what nation they're from. And you're looking at masses burning, screaming. And here's the, what I want to tell you. The Lord's word is written in big black letters in paragraphs and sentences. Flames around them. You can read the word of God. Lovers of their own flesh more than God's commandment. Amen. The, the lust of their flesh deceive them. Devils deceive them. This is scary. I mean, it's real scary. And you think about it. How many of you thought since the service began about somebody in hell? How many thought about it? You really thought about it? Have you cried a little bit? I know you do. You can't help it. Because when your eyes come open and when you hear with your ear, God's circumcising your ear and your eyes to see. We walk, we talk. Rarely does anybody, when you're young or in your teens, really think about eternity. From the cradle to the grave, we know as grandmas and grandpas, we never dreamed we would be this age, did we? Tell the truth, guys. Tell how fast time goes. Life is like a vapor of smoke. In hell, their carcasses had a vapor of smoke. Moving and moving, but it could never go outside the rib cage, brother. And they had uh, the, the worms, the bones, and the fire. And they would scream, let me die, let me die. I've been here 50 years, I cannot die. They would scream to Jesus, get us out, get us out. And Jesus would cry. And some of them would curse the Lord. They would blaspheme him as he walked by. And there were sections where backslide ministers were. That was an area, sweetheart, called, it was a vat. It was about as big as this room. It was four or five feet tall, made out of rusty metal in a circle like a water tower. And I watched with Jesus as demons, demons, by the way, are not invisible in hell. You can see the horns, the tails. Some four faces, some, oh my God, two feet, three feet, tails. They got hoofs. It's just like these horror shows. They're horrible. And they will have chains around skeletons dragging them. And they will laugh. They'll say, according to this, we have to, um, we're going to put you uh, uh, with the murderers. You were a murderer on the earth. Yeah, they do that. They have books and records. And they take and put you with the murderer. And they'll say, According to this, you're, you were called and chosen of God, and we deceived you into backsliding, and we killed you before you could come to the knowledge of what God wanted you to do. And they said, we deceived you. Demons say, we deceived you. And they're on this chain. So what they do, they, they pick like 10 skeletons out of those people with a chain, and they throw them in that vat. And that vat has lava it has boiling, raging fire that comes up, 
splatters over the edges, and in it is people bobbing up and down, screaming and screaming and screaming. And Jesus said to me, they had many chances to lead my people to Jesus Christ. He said, those men and women's souls in there were knew better. Every one of them knew better, and they lied when they was in a pulpit. They lied to the congregation. They never warned them about eternal damnation. They never told them the truth and said, I warned them. And I said, prophets, I said, apostles to him. And he was weeping. He said, child, <clears throat> beware. Don't you never fall back. Oh, he warned me, man. So that's why I'm so bold. Because it scares you when you see the judgment of his father. And then on side of this big metal thing, sweetheart, it was rusty brown metal, was written, the abominations of desolations that stands in the holy place where it should be not. That means the holy pulpit. They were behind a holy altar. And he said, all these souls you've been talking to through hell, some of their leaders are here that brought them to hell. They never told them the truth. They never told them to repent and be ye holy for I'm holy. So you understand now how important it is? You have sweetheart. You, all of you are so kind. I want to thank you for giving me offerings. It means the world to me. But you are, you are God's chosen generation, every one of us. And if we don't wake up, baby doll, while it's time, and these young people, you got to open your little eyes. And you got to stop and think. You hear, say you have a friend uh, that was into all this trouble, uh, screaming. Now today in California, I go a lot to California. The kids come in droves to hear me. They say, Mary, is there really a God? They'll say, Mary, what, what does it mean we'll burn forever? Mary, what is going on? I was told there was no God. I was told him I could go to Wicca and be a powerful witch, Mary. Over and over their little hearts. They said, we don't want to do this and go to hell. I mean, their hearts are broken. And we weep and cry with those. They come in droves. The very man that I'm doing the movie with, one of them, his name, won't you pray for him? His name is uh, Andrew Rogers. He's 27 years old, got the Holy Ghost. He's the one that gets the funds for the Christian films. This man, when he started a Bible study, it comes loaded with young actors, Christians, people. These little girls, they've been beat. They've been hurt. These aren't the actors. These are little kids coming in with their friends to Bible study. And I prayed with a lot of them. And they said, oh, my Lord. They said, we never felt such love. We never felt such unity. And God is doing this. You hear me? Businessmen come there. They say, this one man said, this is my family. Said, when I fly to you, New York for business, I fly to Texas. I think of hurrying back to pray with my family. So think about it. God is moving in places you would never dreamed. And, and when if he's picking high elite people, these people are fulfilling Bible prophecy that God's going to raise up a standard in Hollywood and change a lot of things. Okay? So we need your prayers. I want you to pray for me for that movie called Eternity. I want you to pray for a man named Mark Cook. He's the one that works with Passion Movie. And all. He's one of the producers. So we're doing all that paperwork. When I go to these meetings, it touches my heart how they really love God and want to change the world. They want to change destiny. They want to prove we didn't come from a fish nor a frog. Sincerely, it teaches that. Some people believe that. So we have to recognize exactly what damnation means, sweetheart. And it's, even we read in Mark about your hands and your eyes last night. Remember, guys? Where if you keep lying, cheating, stealing, doing the things with this human body, God says, stop it. Stop it. And when we listen to the word, we understand. But the young kids out there, there's such awful doctrines in many places. There's only like maybe 10 churches that really preach fire like you guys do. And the people are coming to them in droves to get their lives right. Isn't that wonderful? 
So I want to read to you here. Thank you, God. Oh, my, I feel his love. Wow, guys, you feel his love just fail? And this is what you, we got to learn together. Let's heed that. Let's say, because pastor said I could. When you feel this, let's right now just close your eyes. Say, Lord, we receive your presence. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, Lord, yes. For I will crown this church with glory. I shall crown this church with glory on Easter. I shall bring my crown of glory down and put on the top of this church. And thou shalt have a changing of the guards. I will send you another troop of angels. And the other angels will come home. Because they will establish more things for you. There will be a changing of the guards. A changing of the atmosphere. That will be your day of elevation. Wow. 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 Thank you, Lord. And many shall come and drink of the waters here. Many shall come, my children, to hear what I'm saying here. You shall see and you shall know I've said these things. For I have chosen this place to let living water flow. I've chosen this place to heal my people. Oh, my. Saith the Spirit of the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Wow, to feel his presence. His arms are around you guys. You're, you're fav favored, highly favored. Highly favored. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Here in uh, the book of Luke, we read it the other day. And we're talking, I'm going to go down. It's uh, chapter 16. And I'm just going to go down here to verse 22. Chapter 16, guys, verse 22, if you want to put that up. Verse 22 of chapter 16 of Luke. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And on that great day, uh, Easter, when Jesus was crucified and he went down, uh, down into hell, when he rose from the dead after, after they put him in the tomb. He said, open up your gates and let the king of glory come in. He went down into hell and all of those that had waited on the promise, there was an abode where they could see down into hell. That's where Jesus went to talk to those that's waiting on him. And it said right here that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, this is the, the rich man, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Right there proves to you those people in the pits that died with their, all their senses could see. And they were on fire with worms crawling through them. And you could not get out of the holes. And I read them to you out of Ezekiel 32. Because, sweetheart, the demons would shove them back in and laugh. It's all true. Bill Weiss talks about it. Other people talk about hell. And let's look at this. He lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham looking afar off, it was far from him, and Lazarus in his bosom. How did this rich man see and understand it was Abraham and it was Lazarus' bosom, Abraham's bosom? How did he know that? They were not a vapor of smoke, evidently, right? They were not in a skeleton form, were they? They were in human forms. They had to be for him to recognize them. And when he looked at them, you know, here's what he said. Verse 24, he didn't just talk, he screamed, he cried. Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Oh, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger. See, you got, he felt, he had, you know, a tongue. And he wanted a drop of water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember, he had his brain. That in your lifetime you had good things received, thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. For now he is comforted and thou art tormented. 
When you read this Holy Scriptures, you wonder, how could this be? How in the world could people walk on the earth, talk and eat and drink and party and fellowship, pray and seek God? Think about it. And all the time, a lot of the sinners, that's the devil's blinded, are so careless and so don't understand they get killed, died, or car wrecks, or get old and go to hell. So God is raising up a standard of holiness again. If years, if it, how many years has the gifts of healing left the earth? How many of you other preachers know? It's been like 30 years, right, in America. It's beginning again now, the massive miracles. It's begin. How many years, guys, you older Christians, when you could go to Shambox 10 and all of them and get miracles, couldn't you? You guys know what I'm talking about? So now it's coming back. Pastor Wright in California has a church like yours. He has a powerful church. Two angels came to him last year, and he said, uh, Pastor Wright, we are the angels over L.A. God has sent us to you that we're going to prepare this place again for Zusa Street 100 years ago. So he's now being prepared. We went to have service there, Pastor Chris. It was the wildest service. He and I got up, because I've known him 24 years, and we got up and we were speaking to the congregation. All at once, he was talking about it, the two angels came to him. He's a very powerful man, very correct like you, very schooled in everything he does. And the power of God hit that place. We, those, we didn't know it. He had the elders like you. And God's power begin to knock people over. The people were falling out. They were jerking. They were running. And I was standing there, and I didn't know what was going on. And Dexter, my spiritual son, he's a born-again Jew, he was froze in the floor because he had to catch a lady that her head was bobbing up and down. You know, he's afraid she'd break her neck. And it was crazy. It just went wild. So he finally got some order, and we had to make a, like you people there, and we hear, we had to let all the people walk through there, and everybody laid hands on them. They were miracles, signs, and wonders. We were there to four in the evening. God did that, all of that. We had no part or lot in that. It was God to prove how much he loved Pastor Wright. Isn't that wild? And people come in droves to his church. And what it is, it's a timing, Pastor Wright told me. He said, Mary, it's the timing said, I've been waiting 40 years for this. Yeah. He said, it's the timing of God. And you never know when God's going to explode things for you. You better get ready, guys. You better get ready because there's going to be a wind coming in this place. going to rock your tree. Wow. Ooh, yes. Glory to his name. Debbie was telling me last night she kept feeling the power of God hit her in her seat. Have you guys been feeling anything like that? Raise your hands. Wow, all over. Just, you know, that's because you opened up your heart and said, okay, God, use me, touch me. And the angels go around. I've seen them. They'll touch you, some of you, and you begin to feel his power. Isn't that wonderful? So we're talking about heaven and hell and a mixture of what the power of God does. So when, when all of this, like this rich man in hell, see, talk, remember, Okay, let's put him in a category. He's still in hell tonight because he rejected God, his commandments. That's when he had to keep the commandments. And so you see, Jesus had to go to the cross to keep his promise naturally to let them out a pair, you know, Abraham's bosom. Am I right? Jesus had to fulfill the prophet's word, his father's word, and be down there to talk to them for three days to make them escape out of that place. He opened up and they were translated to heaven, right? Am I right? Also, the, the graves busted open when he was crucified. 500 people come out of the graves, listen, walk the streets, and then they were brought up to heaven. Think about that. Half of your graveyard down here popped open. A lot of you got family there, right? Think about it a minute. Think. How many times graveyards you, you drive by and say, oh, my God, how many made it to heaven? Yeah, I think that a lot. And you have to start thinking of your family, sweetheart. Some of them are little rascals, you know. And I know, boy, I know. 
I got one that was a Navy SEAL and another one that, oh, they're just boys, you know, but they're, you got to really sit on them sometime, preach the gospel because they like to fight, you know, and wrestle and all that stuff. Do you guys like to fight and wrestle, guys? Now, you're laughing. I know you do. You probably don't let Mama know about it because she'd get a hold of you. And, uh, he, you know, you got to. I, I never, listen, let me tell you mothers. God, let me tell you women here something tonight. If you've got a son or daughter that's in the occult and you're scared to death of them, you get yourself a bottle of olive oil, go in their room and sit on them and drown them in the olive oil. And you prophesy over them. Thus saith the Lord, you're going to live. You're not going to die. You're going to serve the Lord. Don't be a coward and run in the corner. And all that little hoochie coochie they stuff they do is a bunch of garbage. And you got to get bold as a lion, you mothers, and knock the devil out of them. Don't let them back you in a corner. You better believe it. We can't back down because we're after the, we don't want their soul to go to hell. You don't want them. A lot of kids are in Wicca. And I'm telling you what, the, the Lord's going to get you kids. You better stop that stuff. And I know what I'm talking about because I've ministered all over the world. And they don't even know they're in darkness till I talk about hell. They get so scared because in hell there's 17 miles high of a circle. And every level, it's about 12 foot and then another 12 feet high of people that was in the occult. There's a bars in the front of their jail cell. And they were witches. They were warlocks. They served Satan. And fires come up the sides of those cave, those jail cells and go in and burn them and burn them. And keeps, it's like it's alive. Then it comes out and it goes in a circle. And Satan comes in the middle. And he takes fireballs out of his hands and throws more at them. And he says, if you don't praise him, the devil, he will burn you more and more. And they're screaming, let us die, let us die. You lied to us. Well, the devil is a liar. He's a liar. So any of you out there in the cult tonight, and if you start doing your hoochie coochies on me, I'm going to come after you. And because if I start to choke, if I start to choke, I know you're in here, so you better not use that trick. I usually go after them because the Lord wants me to. We've had them crawl on their bellies to get out away from my mentor. She, I learned the hard way, you know. She had me go pray for some of them like that. And they didn't crawl then away from me, but they did her. All she had to do was look at them. They'd, whoosh, they'd crawl like a snake to get away from her because of the power in her life. She sought God. She loved God. And when you seek God, you're going to have that power. When you seek him, you shall find him. When you want more of the Holy Ghost. Your wife was telling me, sir, you were really travailing the other night. The pastor right here of, for souls in this place. And it came on me and Debbie, too. We were crying for souls. And the Holy Ghost was saying, I want souls. I want souls to be saved. I want them to come out of darkness into light. And that's what this is all about. So you guys cannot be afraid of your youngins. Amen. I know I'm talking to some women in here. <laughs> yeah, I'll just get, to get you another prayer partner. And if you can't sit them, hold them down, the other one can't. Say, say, hey, young and I gave birth to you. You came out of my body, and I'd be doggone if you're going to tell me what to do. <laughs> you got to get bold with the devil. He'll take your child to hell, man. My son, my son was a Navy SEAL, and, and something happened in our life very critical. I mean, not critical, uh, horrible disaster. And... He, uh, he turned into drugs. He got on cocaine. He got it never, raised in church and everything. And uh, what happened to him, <clears throat> for two years, we had to get, look for him, pray for him, find him. And, and every time my son, his brother would find him, he would go to the drug house and pour oil on him in front of all those other people. And he'll say, you're coming out of this. You can't do this, you know. And all kind of stuff. And they would find him and bring him home. He was so bound by drugs. And uh, later on, uh, I was travailing one night. Uh, all night, I travailed from sundown 
till six, six till six. And when I, I looked up and there was a red glow, a circle on my ceiling. In the middle was lights like that. And I took a picture of it. And then the, it moved back. And then I had a vision, open vision of heaven. And all my prayers are going straight to heaven. And I really saw this, guys. I saw big stallions, worn, worn horses. They had some kind of metal on their legs, the horses. Now, the reason I'm telling you this, these demons need this. They need to be destroyed. And it's in Malachi. And then the, their, their legs, um, then the riders were dressed with metal and iron. But they were 30 foot high. The horses was this wide. Big, big stallions. They were sitting on them in rows, and Michael the archangel was in front of them. They had a sword. Flames come out of the bottom and the top. And they had helmets on, and their jaws were made out of iron. They weren't, you, you'd think it was the devil if you didn't know they were God's warring angels. And uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Dot, only for your son will we move tonight. Today, we're going to move for many children in the earth, many children on drugs and stuff. And so what happened, they began to come down to the earth. And uh, I saw the angels going into where drug scenes was and picking out certain children and pulling monkeys off their back, monkeys off their legs, and burning them up with them sores. Then I saw homes and houses. I saw bars where people were sitting at the bar and demons be hanging on their legs like monkeys, Pastor, and on their shoulders. And the angels just pull them off and cremate them with that sword. And the Lord said, they don't have any souls, the demons. It's their day of judgment in my son's name. I saw this. I'm telling you what I saw. And later on, uh, when my son was delivered, I said, honey, did you feel like a monkey was on your back? He said, Lord, yes. He said, I actually could feel it crawling around my neck. And he said, it would tell me you're no good. Nobody loves you. You might as well over D and this and that. Oh, yeah. And he said, Mom, I knew better, but this thing had such a grip on me. I could not. I could not let go. It made me go in a circle like a madman. And he said, I hated it. I hated it. And he said, I met one man, Mama, that came to a drug, a drug house because the Lord told me that he was going to send help to my son. But he said, Mama, he was different. He said he, he was a huge muscle-made man. He said to me, his name's Scott. He said, you do not need to be here. Your mother's praying for you, your father. And he said, I looked at him and, and said, I believe in angels. I believe in all that. And he said, I watched him. And he, I guess he lived with those guys for like three weeks. And they said, right before their eyes, he withered up and vanished. He just turned into a skeleton. And he said, this is your destiny if you keep this up. He showed him what would happen to him on the drug. He don't like to talk about it. The day he really got delivered, I was in Detroit, Michigan, and we live in Florida. And that morning, God said to me, your son has died. And I said, what, Lord? He said, call some prophets to pray with you today. And I got real nervous. And I tried to call my, my family at home. And nobody answered their phone. And so I finally, as God said, I told you to call some prophets, you know. Pastor, only on one hand can I know real five true prophets. Only five. How many of you know that are real? Count them. Count them in your heart right now. Count them. That they know love you and will pray for you. So I called Harry Sauer. He's a, him and his wife are friends of mine. He's a prophet in Detroit. And Harry's a laid back prophet. He'll talk forever if you don't shut him up. He loves God. And I'm his friend. So I said, Harry, you cannot talk forever. Hush. We got to pray. We got to pray. My son has died. He OD'd on drugs because we found it out. They called us. And Harry said, okay, we pray. And I had a vision, Harry did too, but Harry saw the hand of God come on him. He saw his soul coming out of his body. He saw God take his hand and put it back in his body and him get up and walk. And he said, don't worry, he's going to be okay. I had the same vision, but mine was a little different because I'm a mother, you know, and I'm scared to death. I mean, I'm, I've seen hell and all, but buddy, you don't want your kids ever to go to that. Good Lord. 
And so, children, here's what happened. This is the truth. Uh, we called and called. I tried to call home, couldn't. And finally, my daughter answered and screamed, Mama, Mama, Scott is dead. He's in the uh, hospital, dead on arrival. And she said, I'm going over there. It was in, it's called, we have a hospital called, listen to this, Just Perished. That's horrible. You just perished away. And then another hospital called Wustoff. You're worse off. So they took him to worse off, you know. And uh, so, <laughs> so tree, but what happened, they, he, they couldn't find him. He disappeared out of the hospital. So what happened when I called him, I finally got him late at night on the phone. I'm screaming at him. You crazy thing. You could have died. Oh, you did die. I said, what are you, what are you doing? And he had chopped his tongue up with seizures. He said, please, Mom, calm down. I'm okay. And he said, I said, what happened to you? He said, I'm not going to tell you. I said, you're going to tell me, boy. He said, he didn't tell me everything. And today, he, he don't tell me. He said, what happened to him? He, he was on a gurney. Dead on arrival in the, the hall. He knew because all he saw was blackness. He could see it. And he said all at once, life, he came alive. He come awake and he walked up, woke up, pushed the sheet off of him, walked out the door. And he came home. And he said, that, I see, he said, when I got home, Jesus was here waiting on me. And Jesus talked to him and totally healed him. He did a 95 turn, degree turnaround. Yeah, and that great. That was about 10 years ago, and uh, he's a great, great young man of God, and, and he's a seer also. But what I want to tell you, when we go through crisis, you young people, please find somebody that loves you. I don't care if it's, it's you know, you have friends, girlfriends, whatever, boyfriends, and you guys get to a pastor that loves you. You hear me? You better hear me, because you're going to need their help. Someday you're going to need it. When I was having, when my kids was little, we'd always have the other kids come over and pray when they were six and seven years old. And one day there was a little boy. He came and he was crying. He said, Miss Baxter, my daddy's in jail for bad stuff. Would you pray and ask Jesus and let me see my daddy? He had his little bag. He was going to run away. Naturally, I told him, mother didn't let him run away. But that little boy today is a pastor of a church. He's 35 years old, maybe 100 miles from me. People like that, and I would tell these children, if you ever get in trouble, call on Jesus Christ. One of the little boys came back. These all my kids was little. And they said, Miss Baxter, I was in a car wreck last week, and in Banana River, we went into the river, and I was in the back seat. And he was 10 years old. That was like two weeks after I told him to call on Jesus. And two of the boys died because we have a banana river there. And we're by waters. We're right on the Merritt Island, Cocoa Beach here, all their marriage. And he said, what happened? An air bubble came around my head. And I kept saying, Jesus, don't let me die. Jesus, don't let me die. And an air bubble. He lived. He was in the water 15 minutes under the water. He lived. And he got him out of the back seat. So listen, Jesus will answer your cries. Are you hearing me? Don't, don't tell them. Don't be, and then I taught my little kids too. If you feel a gut feeling, you better not do that. You better not do it. Because you better behave. So what we do as parents, sometimes we don't see the danger they're going to get in. The kids today get hammered in high school, hammered in college. They get little guys. They get, you know, I know because I've been through all that stuff. And we have to know that they need to know how they're loved. Even if they fall down and you have to leave them alone a while, uh, still love them, still get in touch with them. Because that's the devil's game, so you won't communicate with them. And they'll end up in jail. And so God delivered my son. But Buddy, it was through a lot of prayer to Valen. And then the other son, he's a little stinker too. We were in Detroit. I was in Detroit, and uh, I've been doing this since 196, I mean, 90, uh, 93 is when my book came out. And then I didn't really start going in the world till, till 96, only twice a month. And then later on, I think it was 97, 
I preached three straight years nonstop, 400 services a year and everything because the kids were grown then. But what happened to me, one day I was really seeking God about my son, uh, the younger one. And that little stinker was in Detroit and he called me for some money. And I said, I'm not giving you no money. You, I don't know what you're going to do with it, son. And he said, well, mother, I just want to go party. I said, yeah, I'm not giving you money to go party. Am I crazy? And I slammed the phone down on him. I was having a bad day. And now this was when he was, oh, my God, how old was he? About 21, I think. Five, six years later, we're in another place preaching. He's helping me. And uh, his mother-in-law is sitting at our table. I'm there, and we're in Perkins. That's where we took that dead lady that day that raised one day. And uh, Grandma looks at him and said, Billy, did you ever tell your mother what rotten thing you did the day she wouldn't give you the money? I said, what rotten thing did you do, Bill? He said, I went up on the Resonance Center in Detroit City. You guys know that biggest building in Detroit? You do know. Thank you. Do you remember the Resonance? You guys, none of you don't pay the co- On the computer, they had to get a name for it, what, 15 years ago? It's called the Resonance Center. It's the highest building in Detroit City. <laughs> You've never heard of it. <laughs> we lived in Detroit, so I know. But he said, I got so mad at you, Mama. I went on the top floor, and I was going to kill myself. I was going to jump off. And I said to myself, she'll really feel bad then. Cause she didn't give me the money. I thought, what? And Ma said, let him finish before you smack him, you know. So... <laughs> He said, I took a flying leap off that and jumped in the air. I think it's 20, 30, 40 stories high. You know, it had been a vegetable or nothing when he fell. He said, a big angel grabbed me around the neck. (laughs) He said, like like Mr. T. And he said, boy, do you know where you're going to go if I drop you straight to hell? (laughs) And and, and he he said, I was so angry. He threw me back up on the thing. He threw him back up on the top of the resonance. Look it up on your internet. You'll see the building. And said, oh, that made me mad. And said, he, he said, I jumped up and took another flying leap. Out. <laughs> yeah. He, Kenneth Hagen's son, remember? He helped him off a motorcycle. Remember that? But Hagen, yeah. And he said, I took another flying leap, Mama. And this time, the angel was mad. Said he took his fist and knocked me in the jaw all the way back on there and said, I woke up 12 hours later sober and scared to death. (laughs) He knocked him out. So naturally, my reaction was to smack some sense in him. So I smacked him on the jaw. And he said, now, Mom, I done repented. I said, but you never told me, did you? And just things like that. I almost fainted when he told me that. And Ma said, well, you know, God has you out here preaching, taking care of the king's business. He's got to take care of these little stinking kids. She called them stinkers, too. (laughs) It's true. He'll take care of your kids because they don't know how to resist the devil all the time. We, We do. I hope you do. You take your authority. You say, hey, devil, you ain't coming another inch. You know, Jame of Jesus, you back up, devil. So I told all, all, all the kids how to pray like that. And even today, boy, they get in trouble. They'll call me. And I'll say, well, Shandali, start praying. They'll start praying. They know God. They know how powerful he is. And we got to know this God we serve, that he is not going to stand back. When you are seeking God and serving God, sir, he's going to save your whole family. He promised. He promised. So you families got to get together. The Easter's coming. Repent to each other. Pray for each other. And right after Easter, you'll be yelling at each other again. But stop it. It ain't worth it. You will. You will. I know. I know. I've been there. I know that. One cousin made a better pie than you made a coconut cake. And, yeah, especially here in the country. Somebody fried chicken better than you, and then your salad was bad. You know I'm telling you the truth. I know you guys because I'm from Tennessee. We, some of us women thought we were so pretty. We had the best looking husband. And some of the men thought they were so sexy and their wives were so pretty. And they gained some weight and they never told it again. 
<laughs> so I'm trying to let you know life is real. But you got to keep your heart right, your mind right. You got to walk on that straight line and say, God, I'm going to walk the old ancient pathway. I'm going to love my family with all their devils, and I'm going to break that chain off of them. Hey, that's why the Bible says that we're a stink in God's nostrils. It goes up and he just makes a face. I'm telling you, you got to know God is real. Dexter, my spiritual son, he, he was a multimillionaire when the, all the stock market fell. I can tell you because he tells it on TV all the time. He lost millions of dollars. And he ended up in a barn with his little dog, pumpkin, little white dog. <laughs> and God had a way of getting him. He was in a church, but I'm not going to tell you the, uh, what the church was. It was called the Chosen Frozen. <laughs> so I call him my Chosen Frozen Son. You got to have fun with this, you know, or you could just be wiped out. So Dexter's telling, here he's crying and moaning. His father worked for Rockefeller, so you know they had money. So Dexter had lost everything, stripped down to nothing. They had two adopted children, and he tells it on TV, so I'm not, because they have a Jewish program, an English program, and a Spanish program. And so they take me there all the time to speak. But listen, Dexter said, he kept crying out to God, what happened to me? What happened to my money? Lord, why? And the Lord showed him a, a dream of the throne of God in the book of Revelations. Either be hot or cold, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And he was in the water that came out of God's mouth. Dexter was. God was spitting him out. So for six months, he was crying with his puppy in the barn. He was homeless. He was having a horrible time. He went through a divorce. His wife took everything. He... <laughs> Now think, guys, what if it was you in the barn? <laughs> think about it. You got to think about it. I hope you don't mind me telling this, Pastor, to the people. Dexter got on the Internet to find him a woman. <laughs> and he got a hold of a beautiful lady, almost 400 pounds, named Marcel. <laughs> Marcel. <laughs> You better not laugh, because today she's gorgeous and weighs like, I don't know, a hundred and something. She's one of my spiritual daughters. She's Spanish, speaks English. She's got 13 years of college. She taught in John Hopkins University and made 5000 a day teaching. Teaching. She bought houses and land, a woman. And her father is a Jew from uh, uh, Venezuela and another country. They're Jewish. And it cracks you up. So they went out to dinner, and Marcia wouldn't look at Dexter because she was embarrassed of her weight and everything. And he kept squeeching. And he'd have to, he said, I had to follow her like this, Ma. Her head would go down. He said, I said to her, finally, do you ever look at who you're talking to? And she said, if I want to. So she's real feisty. And so her brothers made her go on the Internet. That's how she met him. But make a long story short, he blessed her. He helped her. He, he takes her to Norsom's and Macy's. And God's blessed him. He's got back everything he lost. But what happened to him, when he turned back to God, when he said, why do you spew me out of your mouth? The Lord showed to him, you were in a church, he said, that was false doctrine. That's what he told him. And said, you were going a, a different way. And you were being told different things. But I, you, I was in your heart. You were looking for me. So you were in a place of the frozen chosen, and it's real. He said, all those people are frozen. They're chosen of God. But they pay to stay under this old doctrine and old teaching, no life, no love, just nothing holy. And God said, you got to come out of that situation and go find a place where you can know me and serve me and be productive in my kingdom productive in his kingdom oh he's he's a wonderful person he's now god's training him as an apostle and as time went by he, he grew he met marcel she was full of the holy ghost 
she helped him from level to level. He got some of Hagen's book. He got some books of the Holy Ghost by many hen. He got the Holy Ghost by her, her telling him he needed the Holy Ghost. And through the Holy Ghost, help that man grow. So kids, it's real. It's real. Don't give up. Don't be a chosen frozen, okay? Really think about it. And now there's, they're the happiest couple. They Like these two, they preach together, pray together, tell their stories together, and people get saved. And people, family marriages are restored. And tonight I wanted to tell you, God spoke to me to pray for the couples here tonight. All the husbands and wives that are here, I think it's about, it's about time. We're going to pray for you tonight, especially in the ministry here. How many husbands and wives are here tonight? Oh, wow. You're going to get blessed tonight. Yeah. So I wanted to share those life experiences with you, that there's hope. Please don't give up. He raised my child from the dead. He can do it for you, honey, because I stood on his promises. And when that boy was uh, three months old, he used to have epileptic seizures. And under his bed came a light, real bright. It was 3 in the morning, and we would got back from the hospital with him. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, If that child was to ever drop dead, I, the Lord, will raise him up. And years later, see, he did that. Isn't that something? 